So this is my first time using my hand, custom hand forged hatchet that I made with Alec, my friend Alec Steele. He's got an awesome blacksmith YouTube channel. Incredible blacksmith, full stop. I'll pop a link somewhere up here if you guys want to see this build. This is easily probably the, the, the best thing I've ever made in my life. Alec obviously helped me with it, but it's a small hatchet with that sort of Scandinavian style shape to it on the head. And it's a fairly chunky blade axe head. I mean, it's, it's chunky, which is fine because really the primary thing that I'm going to be using this for is, is splitting kindling, really, because there's a really small kind of camp, camp axe, it's tiny. So for me, it's probably going to do everything that I need it to do to today, because if you see in my log store over there, I've already bucked up and, and, and sawed the wood and, and chopped it into, you know, usable sizes. Now I can just use the small hatchet to process it down further for, for use in the actual uh, fire pit itself. But it's super sharp. I mean, I did, a, I did a hair shaving test. Let's do another one and just make my whole arm bald, to be honest, because I did that the other day with Alex. So, I mean, it's really sharp. Shaved off all that patch down there. So yeah, she's a sharp one. <laughs> anyway, it's nice because this is like a world exclusive. It's the only one ever in the world that's ever been made because it's only myself and Alec that has made it. So I'm looking forward to using it. Let's put it to the test. quite a heavy head to it for the size of the, the hatch itself because of all that width there. There's a lot of weight in this. Which makes splitting fairly big pieces very, very easy. Goes through bone like batter. I'm not giving it a proper swing yet. The problem is, is it's so small. If I'm swinging it really hard, it's a very high chance of it coming back and swinging into my thighs and my legs, which I don't really want. This is awesome. <laughs> I mean, look, just the weight of the head. As with most axes, that's what it will do, but this is quite a knotty piece. Where you've got a knotty piece like this, if you guys can see that, where you've got a knotty piece here, there's no point in me trying to split down the middle of this wood because the, uh, the axe head's just gonna get stuck there. So uh, you try and split around the knot itself. So I'll be going for that area there and possibly another area around the side depending on how it splits, like that. And then that just chocks off around the knot itself and you work, work your weight around it and then you can split it, leaving that knotty part right in the middle there. Still going, I can still get one more split probably before the uh, axe will uh, jam up like that. And that's what happens. If you see there, it's jammed up against the knot, which is fine because that's now a usable piece of wood anyway. Alec, if you're watching, man, this thing is awesome. So cool. I'm in love. Woo. All I want to do is chop wood all day and use this. Wood just falls apart. Really love it, it's got loads of control for such a small hatchet. So what I'm doing here is using the curvature of the axe handle itself and that's why I asked Alec to keep that curve to it so that I can rest pieces of wood and split wood this way and then keep my hand nice and clear under here. Just another way of splitting wood. It's got a knot that size. So. This is awesome. Holding up really well. So much power in that. I'll show you guys a bit in a bit. <laughs> Making good good meal of this. Oh, it's a beauty. So I've gone for this scorched handle. Typically, you wouldn't you sort of wouldn't scorch them as much as this really. A lot of people just like one blow over with the blowtorch and just to give it that kind of the black then goes into the grain and makes a nice pattern of it but 
I haven't seen many completely scorched, and that's why I said to Alec, let's just go for it. Let's scorch the whole thing without damaging the wood. Just because I wanted to. <laughs> that's why I want to. And that, that's, how, that's the result. Completely black handle, except for up here, which I might scorch a bit at some point. But how epic does that look? It's got that like vintage Viking look to the, to the handle, which is awesome. Super chuff with it. I can come right down up here if I need to for kind of, I wonder if it'll feather stick. That's why I wanted this. Oh my days. <laughs> That's insane. I'm actually blown away by that. I did not think, that's nearly doing thinner feather stick curls than my knives would do. Actually, my favorite tool in the world right now. Getting Being able to use something you've made completely by, from scratch is just awesome. And we even forged this with, with the striker's technique is me striking on it with a sledgehammer. Alec holding the piece of molten metal. Just epic. That is the result of feather sticks with this beauty of a hatchet. That is incredible. Look how fine those curls are. This uh, indent up here, it's almost like a finger guard, which I can tuck right up under here, just to get a nice grip and control. So I'm just literally controlling the weight of the head. The handle's doing nothing. There's no, uh, it would be very difficult to feather stick like that. You need to get right on close to it. So I've arrived at camp fairly late compared to when I normally do come for an overnighter. It's coming up lunchtime already. So I want to get some uh, get some food on while I while I can and get the fire going, and that's going to then last me pretty much most of the night. I've got to keep that going then. Temperatures today, just so to inform people, it's about it's warm now. Spring is coming. It's 12 degree, uh, 13 degrees now today, going down to eight, I think it is, or seven tonight. So I will be cosy warm. No no worries about the cold whatsoever tonight. And yeah, should be good fun. So in addition to the Alex Steel Hatchet, collab hatchet, I bought the Lignum Steeler with me, which is another tool that I've forged with Alec. Collaborative knife, which I've named the Lignum Steeler because of the Lignum Batai or Lignum Vitae scales to it. Again, only one of its kind in the world. How epic is that? I honestly urge you guys to go and go and have a go at blacksmithing and forge your own tools and stuff because then you it really is something that's yours to keep and it's yours that you've made no one else has made it in the world it's not like a mass produced by a by a company that is oh, I'm telling you with this saber grind i honestly thought when i was doing this with alec we thought that this would fold fairly easily with that high saber grind like battening and things like that not a problem whatsoever no price on this one folks staying with me handmade Still got the trusty mallet or, or bowling pin, as someone called it. <laughs> Thanks for that comment, by the way. Someone called this a bowling pin and said I should make some more and get a bowling alley going. It's a mallet. Come on, I made it as a mallet. Still need some uh, torching up here. One guy said in the comments about uh, boiling some oil, I think he said, and dip it in boiling oil, and the oil pushes out the water and creates a seal around it. So I've never, I didn't, didn't know about that. So thanks very much for the comment. I didn't bring any oil with me, but perhaps you guys know more about that sort of thing. I thought that was a really good idea. And the oil then preserves the wood as well, but that was why I started burning it. I might burn it a bit later tonight. Let's see. We're getting darker again. Interchangeable British weather. There we go. Oh, this thing is heavy.
I'm gonna cut here because you guys have seen me done do this loads. <laughs> I'm just making a feather stick, that's all I'm doing. <clears throat> Rather than batten the wood down, I'm just gonna process it down with a hatchet, a little bit more. This is like, that's pretty much the limit I would have thought. My knife would obviously be able to get a lot less. No, nope. that <laughs> can go even thinner. That is awesome. This is why I really like hatchets. Because they can do a lot of work that a knife can. And they're super compact. Compared to obviously a, a, a larger axe, like a 24 inch, 26 inch axe, two pound head or something. I think this, I think with Alec we said this was about 800 grams, I can't remember. Might have gone down to 600 grams the head, I can't, I can't actually remember, it's on the video somewhere. On my knife sheath itself, this is actually my sheath for the TBS ball, so I didn't have one for the, the Lignum Steeler. But my fire steel, this is a custom fire steel I made, just a red deer antler. Uh, I've got a bit of elastic here, and people have been asking me, like, how does this work? Well, basically that sits, that elastic is is stopping my fire steel from ever falling out of this sheath and falling off. To get the fire steel out itself, you just grab the elastic, pull it down. You can see I've ripped it already there, but pull it down over the fire steel like that, and then you can pull, so it's on a loop system, you can pull it out. And when you want to put it away, put it back, tuck it back under, and there you go, it's nice and secure. Just a little tip there, if you guys want to be able to you know, put loops and attachments on your fire steel. Some people wear them on their belt, which is completely fine. Up to you. Such gonna be a beautiful evening, this one. Let's try and light the one that I did with the hatchet. That was the curls I did with the hatchet. See uh, if we can light that one. Another little tip, quickly guys. I'm trying to put some tips in this video for you rather than just, uh, cause some videos I don't talk, some I do. So, um, sometimes people find feather sticks quite hard to light. And uh, when you're doing it like this, where they're in a, they're all kind of peeled off and you need to get the bundle going. You feel, a lot of people feel that as they push down on the fire steel, just the feather sticks just go everywhere. So what you can do is make a feather stick. That's not a very good one, but make a feather stick and keep the feathers on the stick. And then hold your fire steel. If your stick's flat enough and you have a flat point, you can always carve out a flat point. Just hold your fire steel against the, let's try that one, against the uh, feathers like that and tuck it right in. Lock it off with your hand, and then you can drive sparks into it with lots of control, and the feathers don't go anywhere. That nearly went, but let's. I didn't want to do it on that one anyway, so I just wanted to teach you guys. So we'll do it on the axe one here. Put the fire steel right up against the... This is not a huge fire steel as well, it's fairly tricky to use. Put the fire steel right up against the curls. Lock it off with your hand, beware of your fingers. It's quite hard doing it up in the air for you guys. Get that heat going in. And there you go. And then we just try and light curl after curl. Just to try and keep them going. Just a little tip, I thought it might help some of you beginners maybe, fire lighting. Make sure you put your gear away once you've used it. You don't want to be digging around for it afterwards. While the flames are high like that, I tend to try and make my coffee then. While there's a high flame, because I can use the, the pot hanger. Once there's hot, um, hot coals, and it's burnt out to hot coals, then I'll use it more for cooking and uh, less for, well, just making use of the flames really, early on in the stage of the fire, and get a cup of coffee on. Because normally if I put this billy on there now, it's not gonna boil, it will put the flame out. But, I have got another water in my bag as well. By doing it this way, I 
and get everything where I want it. Pwah, spiked out. And then I get an early kettle while the fire's really new and fresh. Effectively, that's like killing a bird with two stones, really. Getting the best of the early flame. Early coffee. Get some early swigs of water in as well. It's amazing how quick you can become dehydrated out in the woods just by being mesmerised by things, just by doing things. Things like splitting wood and feather sticks. It, you won't think it will take much out of you, but it will. And you, you need to keep, keep your brain active. And to do that, you need to make sure you're consuming water. Tiredness is when injuries occur. That will take no time at all to boil. At which stage I can tidy up. Typically I keep my coffee and, and basically this is like my, well, beer pouch, whoops, <laughs> busted. Uh, this is my kind of kitchen cooking pouch. So I've got steak spice with pepper and garlic, which I love. Uh, I've got my spoons here. So I've got the spork. It's got some molly webbing in there as well. So I've got my wood coffee spoon for, for my coffee stuff, which I just carved and keep with me, uh, my spork. My processing knife, just the OpenL number eight. Not sponsored by them, guys. Just letting people know in case they want to mimic the same. That's always my food. I never use that for anything but food. So that goes in there as well. It's just my kitchen thing. And then I've got like a mini rag, a bigger rag, because you trust me, this most underrated camping item ever is a rag. You'll always need one. This was sent to me by a subscriber, and it's small pepper and salt pots, or salt and pepper. I never say it that way around, pepper and salt. Salt and pepper. Made by a subscriber who also made me the beer, I think you guys call them koozies over in America, or the US. Koozies, but I think they're the ones you put in the fridge. I, we never use that term in the UK. These things, but they keep it cold or something like that. But these are like padded ones, uh, which are really handy. Stop the beer getting bashed about, which let's face it, it does. And then also I keep my Jiva cubes, just coffee cubes. This is hazelnut. Keep those in here as well. I've got more beer in the other part of the bag as well, but just letting you guys know what I store where. You can see now the fire's still really fresh, but I've already got my cup of coffee. So just something worth thinking about, try and make use of those early flames. Little tip guys, if you stack it up when, they, when there's coals and you need to get a fire going, if you stack it up like a log cabin, it, all those gaps in the logs like that allow lots of oxygen to flow through and you'll always find it will almost burn through the middle like a, like a chimney, like a furnace through the middle. And that's just, it creates that draw that allows the flame to eat through the wood a lot faster. So when you're down to coals or hot coals or very small embers and you need to get your fire going back up quick again, just pop it like this and it saves you all the hassle of having to blow into it to keep it going. It just rips up through it. You can see it now, it's already starting to climb through to the next level. It's on about the second level of this uh, little log cabin fire lay. Or box fire lay it's called as well. Loads of different names for it. Here you go, it's getting, it's getting bigger already. But it's just a low maintenance fire, I don't have to touch that now. It will just burn up, nice and high flames, burn back down and then I'll get hot enough coals to cook on.
And on the lunch menu today, pork and apple sausages. Good old fashioned pork and apple sausages. Look at the state of those beauties. Absolutely fantastic. Oh, they look good. As usual, gonna chuck some steak and steak spice on these because this has pepper and garlic in, which is why I got this type of one. Marinade it gently into the skin of the sausage. Enjoy yourself a fine cup of coffee afterwards. So with the log cabin set up, this fire layer, you can see it's a nice clean flame. There's not really much smoke at all. I can just lay the grill on top. Doesn't matter if it's lying on top of the wood there and not level because that wood's going to burn down and it's all going to sit level anyway. But what it does do by putting this grill on nice and early is I don't wash this at all, ever. It just, I mean, we've only used it a few times, but I'm not going to wash it because I don't, I'm not too fussed about the bacteria because the flame and the heat from that fire is going to kill off all that bacteria, melt off all that gunk from the last one. It's like a barbecue. I never clean, I never clean my barbecue grill ever. I just, even from a previous year where I've not used it for a year, I'll just whack it on the heat and keep all that flavor in there. But this, uh, this warps a bit because it's not, you know, there's a lot of heat in there, but it doesn't matter as long as it holds a sausage up. That's all I care about. But looking forward to that. Coffee is ready, ready for a taste. Oh, she's hot, bugger. I'm already super hungry. So I want to start getting these on just the edge of the flames. Pork and Bramley apple. Absolutely fantastic, that is. Ow, that's hot. Whoa, burning them already. Ah. There's a lot of heat there. I think it's safe to say they are uh, pretty cooked. I burnt them as soon as I put them on the grill because I didn't let that flame go down enough. Have a little look inside of these bad boys. That's cooked. I hope. There's little chunks of apple in there. Look at that. This is my tiki kitchen. Camp update 12, I think it was. Mmm. It's a winner. Wind's picked up quite a bit. I always worry about wind in this woodland, strong winds. I don't come here generally when it's really, really strong winds because it's so dense. I've had trees smash the, the roof, the tarp roof down, fairly big trees. It's, it's sort of unsafe really in really windy conditions because the bigger trees fall down, they knock a load of other trees next to them where they're so close together. So it's quite risky. Well, I thought I'd go for a stroll because some of you are like, oh, you're always in the camp. Why are you always in the camp? Why don't you go around so we can see the scenery? So that's what I'm doing. Let me show you this woodland. So now you can see how super dense it is. Look at the moss all on the ground where it's just so dense. Lovely woodland though. Just very, very dense. And that's where I worry about the trees. Oh, there's a nest up there. I reckon that's a, a buzzard, you know. There's a buzzard, a pair of buzzards that come around this area. But there's also a pair of red kites, so I'm not too sure. There is camp. There's the sun. 
just up there. We've got another couple of hours at least. It's five o'clock now, sunset's about eight, eight o'clock now. We've got loads of time. Camp is looking good. Something. Squirrels probably, I reckon. That looks like a squirrel trying to bury something. Hoof print or something there. And another one here. But I think that's squirrels, the way it's dug like that. There's a lot of game trails in this woodland. For example, I know where they are. This is something I wanted to ask you guys actually, look at this. So these, I'm finding these everywhere in this woodland. Big kind of holes that have been dug out. That's definitely not a squirrel, that's too powerful. Lots of, lots of like soil and peat material moved there and I don't know what it is. And it's, oh, it's always at the base of the trees. Look, another one here at the base of the tree. I mean, it's big, there's my hand. I don't know what it is. Maybe you guys can help me, any of the hunters out there know what this is, look. Again, here, base of the tree, base of the tree, base of the tree, base of the tree there, another one. I really don't understand what it is. Classic example of a game trail, all the way up there, coming down here, going straight through here. Can you see that faint line? If I go lower, maybe there's a little faint line. That's a game trail. I've put the trail come up over here in that corner before and got some big fallow deer. There it is again, look, see? The base of every pine tree. I don't know what it is. Birch polypore, bracket fungus. This one's a bit rotten. Something's had it all underneath there. Growing all up this, near the top of this, uh, this birch stump. Some more up there. And use it to strop your knife as well this stuff here's uh, some navigation tips for you so the sun is over there it's going to set in the west which is around over here somewhere this birch tree here has no moss growing on this side nothing there and lots of moss on this side you can use the trees to help you find which way is north because the moss will generally grow on the shadiest part the shade moss likes to shade and this is obviously a north facing side because there's loads of moss here and i know that that's west because that's where the sun sets which means north is that way so that is the north side the moth side is generally north quick tip for you there navigation so i don't know about you guys but i'm always intrigued by bugs always have done as a kid i've always been intrigued by them and uh you'll know in camp update 14 where I did the bug, the bug scenes. This was filmed here on this log where there was two uh, insects fighting. But I just love bugs. There's a little wood louse. I really like wood lice. Pretty awesome creatures. Ooh, what's he? This is, I think, yeah, it's an old birch tree. I'm just waiting. Oh, is that a grub? Waiting for something big to come out. What's that? Oh, I lost it. Ooh, 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 ooh. Yeah, big one. Yes. That is a, that's one of the biggest wood lice I've ever seen. That's gone in a hole, damn it. something in there. There he comes, here he comes. He's really defensive. There he is. I 
So I've just found this birch here amongst some other birch, silver birch trees. And it got me thinking, we've had quite a late winter this year. So I, I wondered if the sap was still running. Because uh, birch sap is, is obviously really good for you. It's full of goodness, full of antioxidants. I, I did wonder if it might be too late to, uh, to tap the trees. So I'm just going to check test. I've, in my pocket, I always carry with me. I haven't shown this in the videos before, but so in my pocket, I always carry with me my Swiss Army knife. I did have the old old school candy red ones. Dad gave me one when I was a kid. Had it for years. I can't find it now. It's somewhere buried in the loft. This is the Evo Wood 17. I love the fact it's got that. They're walnut. It's got the walnut kind of scales, the, the wood to it, which is really nice finish, which is so different from the traditional kind of candy red color of a Swiss, uh, traditional. Swiss Army knife, but I'll pop a link in the description if you guys are interested in this. Uh, this is, uh, I think, the nine tool one. It's got 13 different sort of functions on it. Uh, but I always, this is my EDC. I always carry this on me all the time. Although the rate UK knife laws are going, I'll probably be illegal soon. Stupid thing. Anyway, let's see if it's the sap's running. So I'm just going to put a little incision. Nothing too drastic. At 45 degree angle. But I think the sap has stopped running. So just trying this one, just to see if there's anything running in this one. It's different to every tree. Sadly, no sap, but I've tidied up the wounds on the tree just to let it heal. And I was a little bit late this year, but it doesn't matter. I'm getting hungry now for dinner soon. And I've got to get back to get some logs on the fire. Again, the fire was right down when I came back. So got some slightly bigger logs that I split and put it in that kind of log, log cabin style fashion again. And you can see that that's acting like that's drawing through the wood, all that air and oxygen, as well as what's coming out in the pipe down here that we installed in Camp Update 14. There's a nice draft coming in there. So it's looking good. So these were the beer covers that I think it was Mitch. I think it was called Mitchell that gave me these in an unboxing. I had a number of options to sleep on the raised bed here. Uh, it's still dropping down to about six or seven degrees tonight. I've got a Thermarest one at home, which I do use sometimes, but I'm not gonna use that on this because that's an expensive mattress and I don't I don't want it popping. Because there's, there's some fairly sharp splintery bits on these sticks, which will pop the mattress and I don't want that. So I've gone to the trusty orange, Gilert, cheapo uh, foam mat. But the difference with this one is, compared to the Thermarest, is this actually has foam inside it. So it inflates as well as have the foam inside it. You've seen it so many times in my, most of my overnighters I've used this. It's really small scale. It's a bit garish. You might want to wear some sunglasses as I just unfold this. So it's super bright orange, but that doesn't matter because it's got foam insulation in it as well, about an inch maybe, probably about half an inch, an inch. And then it's got self-inflating valve here, which I can just open up. And that will draw air in, so I just leave, I can blow air in that as well, but I'll leave like that. I only need to support my upper body, my up to my hips really. And that's why this is so small, because it's the smallest version they do, I think. And I just like carrying the small one, because it's more compact when you can press it down. So I've got that. That was carried in the backpack, because I've got a day pack with me really, so I had to put some things on the outside. This was on the outside. I didn't. I haven't filmed it yet on the outside, but I have. I assure you, I've come into the woods with it on the outside. And tomorrow, when I pack up, I'll show you all my gear being packed up in the bag, so you can see how I've uh, how I've put it all in. This was just sat on a carabiner on the outside of the bag, but it nearly wrecked when I came off in the gate. So I, um, when I first came in the camp, so I took that off, and then uh, hung the backpack on the tree here. 
I didn't want all that weight to snap the branch up on the tree. So this is a four season bag, so I will be warm enough in this tonight. It's, it's probably not necessary to have this. I could go to my summer bag, which is just a two season special, really cheap. Um, and it's pretty naff to be honest. I'm thinking of getting a new a new bag for my uh, summer summer bag. I can open this out now. I don't have to worry about bugs because we're just on the edge of when the bugs are coming now. We're right on the edge. I've seen a few spiders around. I'm I'm okay with bugs personally. I know some people get really freaked out with them. They don't really do they don't really do much for me. There's nothing here in the UK that's majorly gonna 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 hurt me to be honest, like scorpions or anything like that. Other than that, there really isn't much. Mosquitoes is probably the main the main thing that's going to be a bit of a pain in the summer months, especially the further north you go and the more near lakes and, and kind of big open expanses of uh, fresh water. That's why I like my coastal camping. So I can, I can leave this out and I don't really mind. I don't think there's bugs going to go in it. And if they do, well, they're going to have a good night's sleep because it'd be nice and warm in there. So that's my setup. It's fairly sort of minimal, really. It's just a thin pad. So for my pillow, I just have my shemag, which I put in the bottom of my backpack. Uh, and I just, I've done this a fair few times before, but I just fold it up into a little square, rectangle, like that. And that's usually enough to put it on. I've also got my coat, which I wore in. Sometimes I wrap that into a rectangle and wrap my shemag, or shemag, around it. And that just makes the pillow a bit, uh, a bit more puffy. But this is a great sort of portable thing to carry. Multiple uses. Obviously, it's, it can be used as a rag. It can be used as a sling. I've used it as a sling before in a demo for first aid in my first aid kit video. Uh, but yeah, so that'll be the pillow for tonight. This has a fair bit of padding in it as well anyway, so not too fussed. I'm, I'll probably have my head this end because the fire's closer this end. Obviously this wall's broken down to my right, or your left, which I need to fix at some point, but I can't be bothered right now. I'm just getting a log, bit of a mini log store going inside the camp. Just so I don't have to keep going outside to the log store throughout the night. I can just build it up here by the fire. There's still some heat punching off that, which will dry out some of these damp ones. They're a bit damp on the edge. Get some more. found a, a nice piece of pine which might make a nice hearth board or hearth board for a bow drill which I may have a go at tomorrow so I'm just gonna process it down a bit more take that damp piece out and then we should have a nice flat board Pretty good. Ready for the next meal. So for dinner, apologies all vegans that are watching, I'm going to go for a double burger. Beef burger that is. Now last time I burnt the sausages a bit too 
too quickly, so place this on the outside. But I didn't bring any uh, buns, which is a shame, I forgot. Oh well. But a burger like that will be absolutely fine. And for the beer of choice, I'm going to go with this one because I know it's my buddies, Rich, who gave this to me. So Rich, thank you very much, sir. He gave me the 13 Guns Crafty Dan American IPA. The forest is literally alive with birds at the moment. Lovely. Getting low on light, I'm going to have to put the camera light on soon. And these are looking good. Oh! Ow! It's hot! So I generally always pack a pair of gloves with me just to lift hot things, hot items. In this case, the grill is pretty hot, so just slide that off. Now, stoke up the fire. And get it going again. I've used pretty punky wood at the moment, which is why it's so smoky. But now I think it's time to build it back up again Ooh, to uh, some decent wood and get some hardwoods on there because at the moment it's all been pine. I don't know what the time is yet, I'll have a look in a minute. Again, see how it's pretty much coals? Get the log cabin uh, Set up going, add a bit of oxygen, like so. Bob is your uncle. Didn't check my uh, head torch battery. So my head torch battery has actually ran out from being, sorry, put in my backpack, it's completely run out, it's dead. What's happened is it's something's lent against the contact and pushed it in. In hindsight, I should have probably take the battery out. I've, le I've done this so many times before, I don't know why I don't learn. I should take the battery out and just, you know, elastic band it to the head torch so that there's no battery in there or reverse the contacts. Although sometimes that can uh, be bad for the battery. Idiot. So we've got a dead head torch, but luckily, this is my phone power bank, which is awesome by the way, this one, but I'll pop a link in the description if you're interested in this. It's got a torch, and it's still got three bars of battery on it, and it's got SOS mode, which is on now, and a standard, uh, you can turn the torch off, and then it's got a faster flash, and then it's permanent. And you can see that, it's a pretty damn good torch. And that's all I've got for lighting tonight, as, other than the fire. So we're just gonna have to run with it. Just gonna have to run with this, this light and hope that it lasts. Yeah, they're cooked. What can I say? It's a burger cooked over a campfire, guys. That's all I can say, really. Do you guys remember the old candle, Yuko candle that I used? I think it was on the coastal overnight here. Well, I bought it with me. It's probably fitting, really, as given that I've forgotten everything else. I know you can pull it down from the glass and light it, but I'm just going to do it this way. Little ambient light for reading, really.
old school lantern. It's my reading light. <laughs> Not much, but it will last quite a few hours. The glow there, that's how much candles left. With the spring activation, it'll always push up. So the candle will always stay the same height. So this is about as light as I can get it tonight. Which isn't very light. Fire's got some good warmth though. Candle doesn't give off much light like that, but it's nice ambient light. Sleeping bag, mat, beers. Yeah, got to tidy up that lot in a minute. So hopefully you guys can see I have lashed the charger to the tree with a very basic lashing there, but that's as good as it's going to get. So hopefully you can see. Hopefully you can see me. <clears throat> so I, did, I posted a picture way earlier when I got a bit of signal on my Instagram, uh, just saying I'm in the woods. Uh, just saying uh, about a Q and A really for this for this particular video, because I get very sporadic signal here where I am. But I'm just going to uh, try and answer a few of your questions that you guys have sent over on Instagram. There's a few on Facebook as well. I'll just pick out a few. I'm not I, obviously I cannot answer all of them, guys. I'm sorry. What is your favourite, this is Northbound Beauty, what is your favourite tool to use in the forest, brand and object? Well, it's got to be, it's got to be the Alex Steel Hatchet right now. That is literally my, hands down, my favourite tool to use. Who is your favourite bushcraft YouTube channel and why? Oh, that's a good question. I don't, I actually follow, I've said this before, I follow way more fishing channels than I do bushcraft because fishing is my thing, that's what, that's what I'm sort of most passionate about. It's what I've done for years, or most of my life with Dad, we're, like I say, we're fishermen really. Dad brought me up fishing rather than bushcraft. We, I didn't do bushcraft with Dad or anything like that, I did I did fishing. So I follow a lot of the fishing channels um, and uh, all the, the fishing scene in general on YouTube. But bushcraft wise, I would say my favourite um, YouTube wise would have to be Mike at MCQ Bushcraft. Um, he's, I'm going to pop a link somewhere you'll see a link here and probably down below Mike at MCQ Bushcraft he's about to go on a um, like a six month overlanding adventure with his wife Meg um, which sounds awesome uh, so I, I wish them the best of luck if you guys um, if you're watching Mike and Meg I hope you have a great trip um, looking forward to seeing some of the videos that you have come from that Mike's a really laid-back guy um, and incredibly knowledgeable about wild edibles well he's a bushcraft instructor as well so he, he his knowledge of bushcraft is is like way better than mine is youtube your full-time job do you feel fulfill, fulfilled yes youtube is my full-time job i've been doing this for this is my second year running now second year yeah second year running now full-time um that's a great question that second one do you feel fulfilled i think it's very hard for almost any youtuber to feel fulfilled because it's always about the next video and the next adventure. So it's, it's almost, I almost never feel fulfilled on the YouTube side of things. Life side is different, but on the YouTube side of things, I would say I don't, I don't feel fulfilled, except times like this when I'm chilling by the campfire, I can actually take some time to take it all in. But yeah, that's, that's a difficult, difficult one to answer. It'd be interesting if you ask other YouTubers that. I'd say it's hard to feel fulfilled on YouTube because we're constantly worrying as well about demon like I'll upload a video and it will get demonetized. I don't I don't bother saying it anymore because I don't want to pander on about it but you know sometimes a lot of the time I'll upload a video and it will get demonetized within the first few days. Are there any dinosaurs? No there's no dinosaurs in this wood. I really hope there's no dinosaurs in this woodland. A raptor would scare the crap out of me right now. I hate raptors. T-Rex is fine, you can hide from it, but a raptor would just get you. <laughs> I thought that question was ridiculous. So James ha <laughs> Jay Hamburglar says, What's the biggest animal you could <laughs> What's the biggest animal you could single-handedly cling film to a lamppost? <laughs> oh I've got to answer this seriously as well. What a question! Jay Hamburg, look, you win question of the day. I reckon I could definitely cling film a pig <laughs> to do a lamp paste because they're fairly, like, docile. I think a horse would be a bit big. A pig would, a pig would be, I'm not talking like hog, wild hog, I'm talking like pig, bacon pig. That would probably be, that's a pretty hefty animal. It's pretty big and it's non-aggressive. Wonder with fur. 
Any chance of a bushcraft trip with Hayes outdoors? Yeah, if I, sp I speak to Hayes, we'll definitely, uh, we'll definitely get a camp in at some point. So instantly, the, the top Facebook comment is from Lee Mason, who says, has anything spooky ever happened to you in the woods? Backed up by David Cheer Cheever, who says, good question. We have some, some animals that are not friendly, often have to be on guard. So I've not had any bad experiences with animals in the woods here in the UK. We don't really have many, anything that's going to come up to us. A lot of the stuff is going to run away and be scared from us. So we're quite fortunate in that sense. The weirdest experience I've ever had is actually on a fishing trip with Dad. We were carp fishing by a lake and we were in a field. And we were camping overnight, not by the carp lake, but in an actual farmer's field. And I was in the tent with Dad and some everyone, like Dad was asleep. I was just wide awake. I don't know what time it was because I was only a kid, probably eight, maybe eight or nine. And um, I, I remember, this is the creepiest experience I've ever had. Um, I was lying on the, obviously the side of the tent was coming down here. It was just your typical standard family two-man dome tent. And I remember lying down uh, and I, there was horses in the field. But I remember waking up in the night and just hearing this like rustling, very faint rustling here to, to, to my side. And I remember this, the tent did this. Like if you imagine this is the, some, this is the tent wall there. The tent crumpled in like that really slowly and then touched my face and something just went <laughs> and honest to God, I didn't scream. I just remember, bearing in mind I was saying, I just remember feeling it push my face like that and the sniffing, the warm sniffing, I don't know what it was. I just remember turning around and this is like an eight year old's punch so there was nothing to it. And I just went boom, but it's probably more like as an eight year old. And it just it just went away, and I couldn't hear what it was. I didn't hear hoofs, so it can't have been a horse. But I don't know. I don't know what it was. But that was the that's the creep. Hands down for me, the creepiest moment I've ever had in the woods. Full stop. Thanks so much for all your questions. So this is my kind of hygiene bag, made for me by. Well, it's just a small possible kind of pouch made for me by my buddy Tim, Blue Angelica Bushcraft. I'll pop a link in the description. This is where I keep my. As seen in the previous video, hand sanitizer, uh, some tissues, some Vaseline, which is also flammable, toothpaste, and this is my toothbrush. So this is my toothbrush, it's just a really small one. I do have mini toothpaste that actually go in there, but I don't have them now, so ran out, used a normal toothpaste. But it's nice and compact, pulls out, folds on itself, and that is just my toothbrush. So that's my hygiene bag for those that haven't seen it before. So I've put some hardwoods on there now, some ash, mostly ash. But this is the best stuff from the log store, which we've not touched all winter. It's kept nice and dry. And that is going seriously well. The one thing I um, basically shoved in my pocket on the way here, because I'm in it clothing wise, just so you know, I'm in it hoodie t-shirt underneath that's it just hoodie t-shirt and my kind of bushcraft pants that's it wool merino wool socks walking boots that's it clothing wise i have got my wool hat as well which for tonight i will just put on because i know it will drop down as soon as that fire gets out it's probably one of the quietest nights in the woods i've ever heard so far it's 10 15 now and usually i hear animals another thing to uh, combat the bugs. As one of the guys was asking, is at night, tuck your sock or your socks over your trousers. You look like a bit of a loon, but seriously, keeps the bugs, they, that's where they're gonna come in, is in those nooks and crannies. Giggity, and that is uh, where you wanna cut them out, so. Also helps retain your warmth a bit. Let's see how hot things get. This is good. This is cosy. I'm gonna call it a night. Thank you if you're still watching, I appreciate it. And hopefully tomorrow there's plans to tinker around with that bow drill kit. Maybe see if I can give it a go. I was just gonna make a kit and kind of uh, dry it out a bit, but we'll see if we can get something going. Cook up some more food. Just enjoy being in the woods. You still watching? Thank you very much. I'll see you guys in the morning.
Good morning guys. It's now six o'clock. And to be honest, I didn't actually sleep that, that great. This bed is at an angle and I kept rolling in towards the wall. My sleeping bag like slides a lot on top of this mat. Which is really annoying. <sighs> nice to see the view from the window. Nice hearty breakfast of bacon. Bit of a meat feast this one. While I'm waiting for the grill to cool down, I'm just gonna start packing up. But I have made a little bow drill kit, let me show you guys. So I actually started this yesterday. Got my hearth board and my spindle bearing block and bow. The wood is it's like slightly damp. I might give it a go in a minute. Well, I'll pack this slot away first and then I'll give it a go. So inside MPP pouch. I'll just put the kitchen gear, kitchen gear. Basically spork, spoon and knife. That goes in there. Also got my Yuko candle, that goes in there as well. And a wash bag, that'll fit. Yeah, these are about two liters, these ones. Blue rag, the green one's already in there. It's just dead handy having the blue rag for cleaning your hands and general gunk off things, like your billy cans. It's only tiny as well. So that goes in there. Oh yeah, steak spice. Can't forget that. And the beer the covers. That's pretty much full. Spare battery that I've already gone to on the camera. Just so mag, I just fold like this or whatever, just fold it in a square and put it at the bottom of the backpack. Just adds us a bit of padding. That's about the, the sort of diameter of the backpack. And that goes in first.
obviously I've got the beer cans to take back, but a little tip, obviously I can save space by crushing these beer cans down flat. But if I do that with my boot, there is a chance that it could puncture through the sole and make a hole in the boot, which would basically ruin the boot and the effectiveness of the boot. So what you can do is just with a piece of flat wood, place it over your beer can, then put your foot on it, crush down, flat beer can, no bad foot. Use the same indent that you've used before because that's nice and sturdy. Same again. Flat beer can. Before I pack it in the way, I was going to give this a go, this bow drill. I've got some a green leaf here just to lubricate this hole. So I've burnt it in, but you can see it's pretty split wood. We're going to give this a go anyway, see what we can do. Made my notch. Still not there. Shredding the paracord as well on this bow. Okay. Uh, I have to get back soon, sadly. So I'm going to give it one more go. No, not today, unfortunately. Little tip, by the way, if you fail at bow drill, you've still got those hot coals. Throw some sparks into it. Just a shame I wasn't close enough to to get that. Always another time, people. One more time. One more time. Bow drill fail, come back to that another episode. Sleeping pad in Billy can water bottle knife. I actually try and tuck right down the back in the corner. Camera, I don't think you saw that, so tinder bag was there. Camera batteries. The epic hatchet with no sheath yet, so I just put some tissue around it because I don't want to rip my bag. Nice and small, look, goes in the pack pack dead easy in the day pack. My second water bottle. And that pretty much sums up that top, top bit. Ooh, only just. Okay, then on the bottom of my bag here, this is how I carry my sleeping bag in. Carabiner, clips through the sleeping bag, through the molly webbing, job done. Bounces around a bit because I've tight put so much in the pack that the bottom straps aren't loose enough to put this on. But it does the job. So I mentioned 
obviously I've got my t-shirt with me and my hoodie but I had my wool shirt on because it was quite cold when I walked in hoodie on top and jacket backpack sleeping bag it's nice to bring a day pack for a change for an overnighter and then sleeping bag just dangles down here and that was it and then I carried the saw which I didn't use too much of but that I just carried in my hands so that's it I've got the beer can beer cans in the side pouch Thank you for watching. Really appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed this video. There's one whole video of me building this whole camp and then there's 14 separate episodes where I do a lot more called the Camp Update series, the Bushcraft Camp Update series. If you want to click on those, everything you need to know is in the video description below. Thank you so much guys and I'll see you soon in the next episode.